Another Tuesday, another episode of Talk Shop with Alan Avki. Welcome back. It's a good one this week, guys. Let me tell you, Justin and Dylan are two incredibly cool entrepreneurs, very well spoken, and they know what they want. These two guys are good friends of mine, and they created this company called NextGen. It's basically a business that empowers entrepreneurs through providing resources and really cool different uh, environments for entrepreneurs to collaborate along with events and all sorts of things. They tackle how they basically got punched in the face when coronavirus hit and how they shifted their focus and still managed to thrive throughout the pandemic. I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. You are now listening to Talk Shop with Alan Avgi. The Next Gen Momentum Boys. The Forbes 30 Under 30 Boys. Just unbelievable what you guys are doing. I love it. I even made notes for this Zoom podcast we have together. It's a talk shop podcast. I'm taking notes because I just love to learn from you guys. And the just the energy between both of you, the synergy you guys have is second to none. I hope one day I could have somebody that I could bounce things off of the way you guys do. Thank you, man. That's really, we really appreciate the opportunity to be here. And we are, um, we are Avgi Incorporated ourselves. So we're <laughs> rocking and rolling. And quick gas up is Dylan and I always try to say we want to be in rooms that make us uncomfortable and force us to raise our bar. And we recently hired an incredible woman who is doing that for us. And when we are in a room with you, Alon, you force Dylan and I to raise our game, to think bigger, to think bolder, and to be sharper about knowing our numbers and knowing our stuff. And we really appreciate that about you. And we're grateful to be on Talk Shop, the podcast, absolute legendary Amen. in the industry. And uh, we appreciate your friendship, man. Oh. Alon, every bit of context I get with you, whether it's in person, me scrolling on Instagram, I like to think I'm your biggest fan, but I know I'm not because I see other people also commenting and messaging you and DMing you. Every time I get more Alon in my life, I'm getting smarter, I'm getting better. What else could you ask for in a friendship and a relationship? This is one of those that you're there for life because I know that we're making each other better. At least I, I like to think I'm holding up the end of the bargain. That's my goal. Dylan, you're much cooler than Justin. Let me just say that. It's true. In college, too, it was true. It was true. <laughs> I love you guys. I really do. So, Dylan, I looked you up before this podcast, um, and I saw something about co-founded Students for Students. What was that about? Alon, that was the OG before Next Gen. Was Justin, Justin involved? And I, oh, Justin was involved. Come on, every, everything. We are a tag team, tandem duo. Yeah, We were in high school, Alon, helping high school students, fellow high schoolers, get into college, quite frankly. Above the table, we like to joke, you know, this was uh, the legal side of it. We simply were helping students with their high school applications. And this was an industry that I don't want to say we felt passionate toward in any way, but we found a way to make money. And as young people getting ready to go to college, my first year at Duke, Justin starting his gap year, money's nice, right? And you're drawn to it if you can find a way to do it on your own merit working for yourself. And that was, I like to think back on Students for Students, the days that I remember the best were when Justin and I were simply having fun, putting a little cash in our pockets, getting ready for what we didn't know was to come in Next Gen. It was a consulting firm. You could call it that. Nice, uh, nice Global small business. education conglomerate. That's what it was. <laughs> and how did that roll over into Next Gen? So what came next? You guys went to different colleges, I'm assuming, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I went down to Duke. Justin started his gap year from the Wharton Business School at the University of Pennsylvania, Highly prestigious. the one and only. Highly, Highly prestigious. prestigious. So cool. And Alon, while building that first business, we just wanted to meet other young people, right? I didn't know you existed, Alon. I didn't know that Justin existed until, thankfully, a couple of friends brought us together. And that's a funny story, too. We'll save them on for a second. Uh, we wanted to just meet other young people who were chasing dreams on their own merit for their own path of success, right? It wasn't necessarily the consulting job or the investment banking degree. No offense, those are my best friends in the world who are working at some of those places, but we were trying to chase our own passions. And that desire, that selfish uh, motivation in a way, led us to build Next Gen and host the first summit, getting a few hundred folks together who thought that same way. Very cool. Justin, you got anything to add to that? What's the ad, man? We're, we're trying to build our own dreams and are uncovering more of our own dreams in the process of building our dreams and running into obstacles. And then it gets really hard. And then you fail, but then you come back and twist it over. It's the journey, man. 
Well, let me let me ask you, Justin, what wakes you up? Because when I look you up, man, come on. Wow. Here's the deal, Alon. I I um I I know that you're you're gonna fall on the right side of this, so I'm not like planting it, but I think there are a lot of people who say, Oh, I stay up really late at night. Like a lot. Of, oh my, I'm grinding 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in college, Dylan and I basically started a venture capital fund called 3 a.m. VC, which was who are the founders staying up until 3 a.m. in the morning? You know, it's all about staying up late until we started really thinking about our own journeys. It's not necessarily the person that stays up really late night to grind. I think the life that we were both chasing is the person who wakes up super freaking early, the alarm goes off and they don't think, oh, I got to go right away to bed. Like my alarm goes off. And the first thing I'm thinking about is not, wow, I can't wait to go to sleep. We were trying to pursue this kind of life where your alarm goes off, you wake up, you're like, let's freaking go. I get to be in this game again. I get to build my dream again. And you found something that wakes you up in the morning. So staying out late and grinding is cool, but we're about pursuing the kind of life and business that we wake up in the morning so fired up to build our dreams that we can't wait to get out of bed and get to it. I love that. I love that so much. And you know, the what wakes you up, that was a reference to your book that I didn't know about, which you never told me about. You wrote a book? Uh, The book has been written and number two is in the works. The title that Dylan and I are working on, I can't say just yet, but it's in the works. I don't know if it'll be published or one or one to 10 years from now. It's a very long timeline, but um, but the books are going to be going to be cranking out soon. It was written back in 2015. So how old were you then? Uh, Dylan and I met when we were seniors in high school, so like roughly 17. And then uh, Dylan went off to Duke and I was accepted to my school, but took a gap year uh, to start working on some of the business projects that Dylan was talking about and that we're currently working on now. Um, So I finished the book during that gap year phase, most of it inspired by the work that Dylan and I started doing our senior year of high school. Okay, cool. I love that. I got to pick up that book. I need a copy signed by you, Justin. Wait, Dylan, are you a co-author on that? I am not a co-author. I am a fan, though. Number one fan club, Alon, let me tell you, I uh, one of the most proud moments of my life was when I got to stand next to Justin as he had his family, his friends at his home for that book signing, that book release. Uh, still one of the most joyous days of my life. It wasn't even my book. I didn't release anything. I got to celebrate my guy over here putting his words to paper. What an accomplishment, right? I know Justin will joke that, oh, I can't believe I said this. I can't believe I said that. What an accomplishment that here we are six years later, jumping out of bed saying, thank God I got another day. Oh my goodness, right? Thank you for giving me this opportunity. That started 2015 when he wrote that book. And you wanna hear a low key fun fact, Dylan, thank you very much for that. The book was published by a very prestigious publishing firm named Next Gen Publishing. It was incorporated, recognized by the Library of Congress. It has published only a few very select titles in the year. They happen to be a very, very small group of authors. But Next Gen Publishing, it's gonna come back. It's gonna return in a big way in Elan. When you write your Think Like a Real Estate Investor, whatever book you're, you're working on in there, uh, we look forward to publishing it under our no, I, I published back when I was 18, six years ago. In the, in the mind of a young entrepreneur, 114-page novelette. It was a fiction story. It was just for fun. Uh, yeah, it's available online. Yeah, it's Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, everywhere. <laughs> done. Get done. Done, man. Wow. So we're all trading books now. Amen. This is great, Dylan. Yours is next. Next Gen Publishing. <laughs> next one is it from Next Gen Publishing. Done deal. I'm the publisher. You two are my talent authors. You know, I just put the whole thing together. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. Dylan, you will make me look so much cooler than I actually am. I cannot wait. Imagine how I feel. Deal. Day. Right? So, but one sec, Dylan, seriously, I think I have a cool family. I'm guessing you have a cool family. We both have to tip our hats to Justin Lafazan's family. Am I right? Like you pen. Cornell, his brother with the Harvard story, he's a legislator, he's in Oyster Bay, all these crazy things. They're all so young and they're doing so many crazy cool things, entrepreneurial and, uh, and politics and even his dad. I actually met them through their dad. Don't you just have to, can't you just go on for hours talking about their family? Isn't it ridiculous how amazing his family is? 100% a lot. We could list off here for the next hour of this entire podcast, go through Josh, Justin, Aaron, their accomplishments, how incredible those three guys are. But it really is two people we got to thank. We got to thank Jeff and Sandy Lafazan. 
right? What they have done, the two people they are, you know Jeff well. I know Sandy. I've been blessed to grow up in their household in a way. And those two are gems, right? And Justin and I say it all the time. We are so thankful to our parents. And I know you share this a lot. Family is everything. It's the reason we're here today, right? They were the only people who were at Next Gen Summit 2015 in Austin, Texas. The only paid wow. tickets. They've wow. been at all the events since. And that will be true, hopefully, for a long, long time. And they're doing it because they love us, not because they necessarily thought it was the best business idea. I hope they did as well. But ultimately, it's because they want to support us. Couldn't be any luckier. Wow. Justin, I've got three deals coming up with your dad this month. I'm, I'm waiting until I can get in the game, man. I'm getting jealous out here. Dylan and I are itching, itching to do some work together. Once we're off this recording, we can schmooze a little bit more about maybe some, uh, some big stuff we can cook up together because that would be a dream of ours. I'd love to hear more. We were touring before this, and I don't know if anybody knows about that from your end, so I'll just leave it out unless you guys say otherwise. But uh, I know some of the plans you guys have, and I think it's awesome, and I'm very excited to be part of it. Amen, so tell me more about this Amen. podcast you guys have coming up. We are trying to get in the game, Alon. We see so many incredible content creators like yourself who are putting their voice out there in an authentic way, right? You're not sitting on Talk Shop Tuesday, get on Instagram Live and, and spewing nonsense. You're giving authentic takeaways, right, from your learnings in the trenches, if you will. So we want to do that for entrepreneurs, for the next-gen audience. We hope that Momentum Audio will give you a boost to go win your week. We have our Momentum newsletter. It comes out Monday. It's going to be in their inbox later today. Now we've got Momentum Audio for those who prefer to listen instead of read. Yeah. We're trying to get in the game and deliver an experience that will make you just, you know, 1% better to tackle those goals because it's tough out here, right? Let's pick it up for you a little bit. So Momentum Audio, have you guys launched that yet? I believe by the time you check on Apple Podcasts, it will have been launched. So check it out everywhere you get your podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, Momentum Audio. You're going to see our first season drop. We have some incredible entrepreneurs. Ray Dalio, you know, the man, the myth, the legend. Seth Goldman, founder of Honest Tea and Beyond Meat. Scott Harrison, founder of Charity Water. Cindy Ecker, two times billion dollar exits. We have some incredible, incredible founders. So season one, Momentum Audio, you know where to look. Wow. And I've got the coolest of the cool guys on my podcast, Justin and Dylan. Uh, we're lucky to be here. That's it. I can't wait to look back in 20 years and say you guys will be spoken about like those names. You know what I mean? That's the whole young entrepreneur is mutual, man. mindset, man, is that we can, if we can get started now, learning from each other, collaborating, getting the resources, getting the mentorship, getting the education, what that will compound to, uh, you know, God only knows, but hopefully really, really impactful for all of us. So we're all grateful to be starting young and uh, let's get back to work. So my next question to both of you guys is, uh, is about how many connections you guys have. You guys have so many connections. It's mind blowing. Right, and this is a conversation I've been having with a lot of entrepreneurs lately on podcasts. People keep asking me the same thing. How do you get investors? How do you meet these people that want to do projects with you? And how do you convince people to sell their projects to you? Or where do you meet these people that you know put you in touch with the lawyers, the this, the that? And uh, the way I'm, I guess, asking you guys how you guys come up with all those connections, right? You're not, you're not looking for investors actively, so we're in a different realm. But you guys have Ray Dalio on your podcast, a multi-billionaire, one of the coolest guys there is, in my opinion, and many other people's opinion. How? How do you guys get all these connections? Dylan's going to give you the tips, but I'll say this. Everybody's always looking for investors of all types. And if you're not always recruiting, always selling, always looking for investors, get out of the game. Dylan, what's your networking secret? I was just going to say, Alon, if you find the investors, send them our way too. We'll take them. <laughs> but I want to tell you a story because I think this perfectly encapsulates Justin and my um, thesis, really, when it comes to networking and building relationships. So, Alon, take it back 2014. We start next gen. Again, as I described before, the simple goal of meeting other Alans, other cool young people who are just building their stuff, right? Real estate, apps, you name it, anything, it fires you up, great, come join us, we wanna meet you. We host the event, Next Gen Summit, and we put a Facebook group out there to help the attendees find each other so maybe they could save a buck or two by rooming together, right? It's tough out here, we're 18, we got no money, we're eating ramen noodles, so room up, bunk up, and you can save a few hundred bucks. After the event ended, that Facebook group exploded. Everybody jumping in. Best weekend of my life. I met my co-founder. I, I 
learn from a speaker. I'm dropping out of school, going to build my startup. Right? All these incredible stories. Wow. And then they started adding their friends, adding a, a buddy, adding a someone from school, a, a startup co-founder. Overnight, this group went from a couple hundred event attendees to thousands. And Justin and I, we said, all right, I guess we're going to moderate this thing, right? So for four years, Alon, four years straight, 2014 until about 2018, every single post that went through that Facebook group, Justin and I together would moderate and say, hey, Alon, great to meet you. Thanks so much for posting. We're going to answer your question with this resource. We're going to connect you to this person. And by the way, check out this thing that we think you'll enjoy for every single post. We did the math when we brought in our first team member to help us out with this very function. It was about 10,000 posts that Justin and I moderated over those four years. 10,000 relationships, 10,000 people, 10,000 different connections, ideas. Wow. And the one common thread, we just wanted to add value. We just wanted to help, show them some love. And if it worked, or even if it didn't work, our intentions were there and they'd stick around, right? And then they'd recommend their friend to come check out Next Gen Summit. They'd send our newsletter along to their mom or cousin or who knows. And that was our simple goal to scaling, was just add value. And that can't work forever, of course, but it got us pretty dang far. And we're here in a lot of reasons for that. And that Facebook group is currently popping. Go to Next Gen Online Group to request your ad. There's a bit of a wait list, but uh, we'd love to learn more about how you found it. Hopefully, if you say, if you say Talk Shop Tuesday, you'll get the auto ad. Automatic it. Seriously, auto in. Auto in. I love it. I love it. See, that's what's so beautiful about you guys. You always just look to add value. And I'm part of that uh, Facebook group as well. And, um, and every time there's something related to real estate, that pops up. I, I get the, uh, you know, hey, Alan is here. He can help you with this and this and this. And I always want to respond. It's like so nice. You know, it's, it, it makes you feel involved. Amen. So I, I definitely know what you're talking about. And that makes you want to introduce more people and everything. It's uh, I, I totally get what you're saying. That's fantastic advice to anybody listening, looking to network and myself. Uh, always looking to meet more people. That was good feedback, Dylan. Well, can I ask you a question? Yeah, shoot. How do you approach the money question? You, you mentioned that you're talking to investors a lot. You're looking to meet other investors, other, I'm sure, deals and projects. A lot of the young entrepreneurs that I speak with, they struggle to ask for money. They, they feel, part of them feels bad. And that's something I know Justin and I in different times of life have also questioned. What is, what is your framework when you're going into a meeting where, Ultimately, it's networking, but you know that this person could be an investor in a project. What are you thinking about that leads your actions? So, great question. One, um, I think I'm, from what I'm told, I'm very confident when I talk to people about money and projects and I've done the walk. You know the way you guys, you, you, you know, you, you walk the walk. You actually do it every day. You know, you took office space in Manhattan. You started your project. You hosted an event. Successful or not, you did it, right? Now let's, uh, let's assume it was successful and you guys built a company and you're bringing on a team. Let's just assume you guys built next gen. Let's just say this is next gen we're talking about, which it is, I'm joking. Obviously you guys have done a fantastic job. But uh, now you, you're going out, reaching out to an investor. You already know your numbers. You know, if you're not pitching something confidently that, and you have that barrier, there's something wrong there in the back of your mind, then maybe you shouldn't be pitching it at all. You know what I mean? That's so I'm not saying don't pitch to other people. I'm saying just know your stuff. Like I love to learn. I'm an avid reader. I love, love, love to learn. So anything I get into first, even if I'm not the best at it and I'm not, there's people I compete with that are so much better than me at doing what I do. I just know everything about it. So when we have those conversations, you're not going to trip me up. I'm not going to make a mistake. And if I do make a mistake, it's an honest mistake and I'll tell the truth because I have nothing to hide. So when I approach new investors, first I, I want to show them the project. And most of them are already very sophisticated. Keep in mind, anybody you know at the caliper that we're speaking to with the type of money that we're speaking to or interested in getting involved with us, um, sharing the same bed as us, understands the dynamics of a business, uh, understands how preferred returns work or IRRs work or waterfall structures work. Otherwise, I'm not so interested in being a partner with them, you know, because then what value do they really provide to me? 
And I think it's the same for you guys because at the end of the day, if you just wanted people to throw a few dollars at you, you could reach out to uh, social media. You could put it out on social media for $20,000 investors, unsophisticated, and uh, not have any high level conversations with. But that's not what we're all trying to accomplish, at least my side and I believe you guys as well. You want people that'll bring you up as well. So all my investors have tremendous companies or work in tremendous companies at a very high level. They all make me grow every time we speak. Um, and they ask great questions and I have to know my stuff, which forces me to be even better every time. And something that um, a huge shout out Alon to you on is in any meeting that I've ever been with you, if you don't know your stuff, um, you have the confidence to say, I'm actually not sure about this. What do you think? Or let me get back to you. And that is, I think, a sign of the ultimate maturity where you don't fumble, make it up, change the subject, but address straight on, hey, I'm not yeah. sure really kind of the answer to this unique question or unique situation, um, but either I'll get back to you or what do you think? Or let's go from here, a different path forward. Yeah, definitely. Well, every time. And I, I could say the same about you guys. We sit down in meetings. You call me there for a reason because I add you that value, you know, of the real estate side. I love sitting down with you guys because you definitely understand branding. Uh, I mean, anything with advertising and just you guys have so many skills put together. I don't even know where to start. You know, it's uh, it's very, very, very. We call it momentum, my man, and we appreciate it. I love that. I love that. Also, I got a. Uh, I got your first, I got your email about that brand regarding raising money. I responded, Dylan Wright, I think, I think it was you and I speaking. Um, tell me a little bit about that business venture. That seems new. We have this incredible community of uh, startup founders, entrepreneurs, even more broadly speaking. And a lot of them, they need some help when it comes to capital, right? That's not a, that's not a, Oh my goodness, newsflash, right? Knowledge bomb. We all know that. You need a little bit of capital at the early stages to get you going. And Justin and I, well, we don't have much capital and uh, we're just getting started putting every dollar we do have back into the growth of this business. But we want to leverage our medium, our platform in a way to help those startups connect with the investors who are also looking for investment opportunities at the early stage. If NextGen can provide access to this group, while also supporting the entrepreneur and their mission and, and getting them the momentum they need to keep going. That's a win for us as the middleman there. And so this is another tool, another resource, if you will, that we want to empower our next gen entrepreneurs with to empower them to scale. And maybe one day that becomes the 3AM VC fund that Justin mentioned before, and we're investing our own capital. I think that would be a really exciting future. We uh, see that very similarly a lot to real estate investments, right? These are investment decisions. One perhaps is through a startup entity and one is a four wall property. Very different learnings, very different details, but ultimately you are managing capital in a sense. And we wanna learn, we wanna meet people who are doing it. That's why I'm so happy that you and I had that brief dialogue. Pass, invest, it doesn't matter. I'm learning from how your mind evaluated that opportunity. So now I'll get to hit the drawing board and think like a lawn, right? That's yeah. the name of your book coming up soon, by the way. But if I can think like Alon, I'm going to add his perspective to this deal. It may not still be the perfect one for you, but I'm going to get better from that. And we're young. We got so much time to grow. I know we all share that mentality. And that's, uh, that's our focus for now. I love that. Justin? Um, we've been doing this in a form or another for six years. Every single business that venture line that we're currently doing, we've been doing for just about six years. We have a get in the game mentality. You wanna be a real estate investor, great. What can you scrape together? The smallest, worst, most horrible asset you can find. I don't care what it looks like. If you wanna be in the real estate game, you have to get in the game. You wanna be in the startup investment world, you have to get in the game. You wanna be in the business world, you have to get in the game. So I think oftentimes young people are so paralyzed because we see these amazing entrepreneurs in the media and we're like, wow, I'm not gonna start a startup until I have a billion dollar idea, until I can get a hundred million fundraise. No, you start the startup up with whatever resources you can possibly cobble together and you start and it's going to suck and your idea is going to be wrong and your co-founder is going to suck and you're going to fight and your team's going to be horrible and you're going to get in the game because once you're in the game game over you're in you're locked you're going to be successful if you're in the game but until yeah. you are in the game you're by definition not in the game yeah definitely how many businesses have you guys had between the two of you 
<laughs> Next Gen, in one form or another, has has launched for like a, eleven sub entities and different. Next Gen Publishing. <laughs> yeah, Next Gen Publishing, Next Millennial Media, Students for Students, Millennial Marketing was a was a great show as well. Uh, we have at least whole, seventeen whole investment purpose, real estate purpose. Um, half of them are failed. The other half are on the way to fail, but we're going to keep going and get in the game. That's the, that's the key, man. One brand though, Alon, that's the, that's the kicker here. The momentum One movement. foundation, one platform. We like the word launchpad because what we're building, it all helps each other, right? So the real estate aspect as a function of the entrepreneur's journey, come on. Now it also helps the investment arm because if we can get them living in our walls and building businesses in our dorm, then we'll know when to invest, right? And I use this very micro example to show that we are taking the long game approach by building the launch pad, the foundation. And then whenever we want to spring off that, let's get in the game. I love that. I love that. I don't know if I ever told you guys I got into real estate because I didn't want to get a job. Respect, man. Yeah. How old were you? 20. 20. <laughs> At Next Gen, um, every brand solves a problem, right? Every brand solves a problem. The problem that we are trying to solve at Next Gen is that if I, do and I speak all the time, we love to speak, we love to schmooze, and we go and we speak to a room full of young people and we say, show of hands, who wants to be your own boss? Do you want to be in the driver's seat of your own life? Do you want to be in charge of your own future? Every hand goes up in the audience. And then when we ask well, how many are you actually going to do that? You're going to graduate college, not get a job, try to do your own thing. Everybody's hands go down. Um, and it is because we're fighting against a pretty big enemy, which is the comfort and the safety that comes along with getting a corporate paycheck. We have incredible corporate partners. We have many friends who are more than fulfilled and happy in their corporate jobs. We are not anti-corporate. Yeah. The enemy that we are trying to target is the safety and the comfort that comes from getting the corporate paycheck. Because if you can get beyond that, comfort and say, you know what, it is really risky and scary and hard to go on your own, but it's worth it to chase your dreams. Well, then you can get in the game and you're going to be successful. So I love that you said you wanted to do it not to avoid the job because that's the, the biggest enemy we can fight against, the safety of getting that corporate paycheck. Yeah. Now, how can NextGen help me with that? Assuming I was starting fresh, brand new. I believe we spoke about this years ago, Justin. How can NextGen help me with that? Speak to the young entrepreneurs here. Young entrepreneurs, we, we have basically done our formula. And we've said entrepreneurship is risky. It's hard. It's complicated. It's scary. All these problems. But we know that it's worth it, right? All of us are smiling because we know that it's worth it. So we've done our, done our homework. And we said, you need really four things to be successful as an entrepreneur. You need a community around you. You need the education, the knowledge on how to do it. You need resources to turbocharge your growth. And you need mentorship, mentors who can show you the way based on their experiences. Community, education, resources, mentorship. So in every product or offering or service we develop to serve entrepreneurs, we have a wide variety over at nextgenhq.com. Uh, we have a wide variety of different services and offerings. We try to infuse those four key pillars in everything that we do. Because with those four key pillars, entrepreneurship gets a little bit easier. And when it's a little bit easier and you're a little bit more energized, you can stay in the game, overcome obstacles. You're going to figure it out yourself. We're not here to give you the roadmap. What we're here to give you is wind at your back. So you can say, I can keep going and keep chasing that dream. Yeah. Wow. Very well said. And to be part of that community, I definitely do feel it actually in the Facebook group chat. Although I'm not very active, I don't ask many questions, anything. I don't think I've asked any, but I've, uh, I've been looped in through like I, you know what you talked about that here's Alon, he can help you and then I give some insight even if it takes five to ten minutes uh, and you get good feedback it's a really good group you guys put together and that's why you got featured in Forbes 30 under 30 tell me about that how how did that happen well we appreciate you tons and I'll quickly comment on the community thread one day you're gonna come to next gen summit in person maybe 2021 22 we'll see and there's going to be a handful of attendees, fellow community members who are going to see your name badge, see Alana Avgi. They're going to say, hey, you got me in the game. Thank you so much. And here you are, December 14th, 2020. You're just doing it because you had a little fun. You enjoy giving back, enjoy helping. To the person on the receiving end of that little tidbit of advice, who knows the impact you can have, right? I think a lot of the motivation from Adam Grant's give and take you got to give and have no expectation. You're just doing that to help. You just said you don't even know that you have posted in the group asking for help, right? You probably haven't, but maybe one day you will. And that's not the point either. 
you are adding value to the community and that's the network effect that we love. And quite frankly, I think that dovetails perfectly into the next answer. With Forbes, with the media in general, we are so honored that we get to now broadcast our mission to hopefully a few entrepreneurs who didn't know about us before. That is what success looks like, right? That is what leveraging the press for our company goals can really entail. If it helps us bolster our brand and augment our offerings and how we can best serve entrepreneurs, sign me up every time. So we're truly grateful. Uh, Justin and I, one of the most impactful early moments for our careers, we met and had a great time at 2014 Forbes Under 30 Summit in Philadelphia. That was one of our first real bonding moments. And here we are almost a little bit past six years later. Uh, it's, it's pretty special. And we're excited just to see how this can only further give us momentum, accelerate our own journey as we uh, continue on. You guys went to the Forbes event? We did. How was that? Ton of fun. We got kicked out of the opening party, Elon, because we were underage okay. and there was an you know, open bar and all that stuff. And to make up for it, they let us meet Wiz Khalifa behind stage. I'll get you the photo for, uh, you know, the social media uh, channels and whatnot. Um, but for us, it was really one of the earliest wide scale exposure to entrepreneurship, right? Hey, there are thousands of people older than us, not quite the next gen population, but they're doing their thing, right? They're chasing their dreams. Why not me? And yeah. that for me opened my eyes, right? That was a huge um, moment catalyst, if you will, in my journey. Very cool. Justin, when is the next in-person event? What do you think? When do you think, man? You're hosting in-person events these days. <laughs> you're, you're wrecking and rolling. What do, you, what do you think? When do you think we'll be good to go to host a 1,000-person event in New York? If it were up to me, it would have been yesterday. <laughs> We're, at, we're watching a calendar. We're, we're going to keep uh, we're going to keep our eyes peered. Look, a huge part of our business is in person activation. There's nothing like getting our souls in the same room and jamming it and trying to build our life and dreams and, and great businesses. So it sucks not being in person. We're doing everything that we can to replicate what we deliver and bring our momentum online. So our core flagship summit, we have an NGS at home product. We have a variety of different digital media products to bring the momentum digitally, but it's not the same. And uh, the second we are rocking and rolling and good to go, I'll give you a call. We'll definitely be hitting you up as a mentor this year at NGS for, uh, for the real estate category, the investment category. Um, we're, we're itching to get back in person, but we'll do it when we can. Okay, so you're thinking what date? <laughs> Oh, man, do you, you let me know. I'll get back to you in a couple quarters. Don't man. play politics with me. Give me an idea. You guys have any idea at all? I think it's going to be a while. Wow. Damn. Yeah, I could see that. Sucks, but I think it's going to be a while. What a shame. And you know, I missed your last event. Hold on. We're ready, though. When those gates <laughs> open up, we're coming no out idea. hot. Let me tell you. 10 events in nine days. We'll be on private jet. We, we have a national flights. tour the second we get back to events in 10 cities across the country, powered by Capital One. It's going to be an incredible event series plan. 10 cities, San Fran, LA, Austin, Atlanta, Seattle. I'm even making it Philly, Portland, Boston, DC, Boston, Portland. New York. We have 10 city tour with Capital One right when we are back and we cannot wait to get going. And shout out to all the brands out there who want to get in on some action. NextGenHQ.com. We'll, we'll be happy to chat with you. So the lines are open. Explain to me the pivot you guys made as NextGen, as a company, when Corona happened and it basically stripped you guys of your biggest income source and your biggest you know, networking source and everything. That was everything for you guys. You host bomb events. So what was the pivot and how are you doing now considering what changed? I'll, I'll let Jay answer, but I'll quickly lead in by saying that uh, Justin and I, about a week before we got kicked out of our office in Manhattan, we were mocking up on the board this like, you know, strategy approach. And we jokingly said, I think that we might pivot to digital in like five months when if this thing doesn't happen, it might take us five years. And that uh, forced like window where you know that it's do or die on, that's powerful, right? When your back's up against the wall, you have no clue which way is up, but you gotta act, right? Having the confidence to make decisions in uncertain times, that has been special. But Jay, wh what did we do that we were able to make decisions about? 
a week before Dylan, we were on a whiteboard in our office and I remember being like, Dylan, you you want me to model out a doomsday scenario? Like, is this really a model we should run for? You wanted me to model no event revenue for the next 12 months? Like, how how do you want me to model it? We don't want to have a business. He's like, Justin, I, really, I think we have to start really thinking about this. And um, Dylan was incredibly clear headed through the very beginning of coronavirus, um, which is a huge testament to the courage that he has as an individual. Um, so we got punched in the face as with our business. Yeah. Um, we came out with a theme for 2020 called Momentum Never Stops. Because at the end of the day, we might have gotten punched in the face and have to totally rebuild one full business while uh, still trying to figure out everything else in the world. But momentum never stops. And when we're focused on our core value of serving entrepreneurs with momentum, we knew we would just take another another pathway. So we, we fully built a digital media company in in probably six weeks um, that, as Dylan mentioned, we had on our plan for maybe two years later. So we compressed the two-year digital media plan into six weeks. We built a new product offering for corporations to access the next generation movement uh, in that same time period. And we started doing product development on basically three new entire lines of business, uh, all with the idea that we can't count on anything happening in the world. We need to take full control of our own destiny. So we don't know if COVID's done in one month, one week, one year, 10 years, we need to start planning for the future. So we made a totally new game plan, assuming that our events never come back and we never have the business that built us the foundation we have today. How do we survive? So we focused on our core value of serving entrepreneurs. We asked questions to potential customers of what problems they are facing and how can we solve those problems using our core value, built probably five new lines of business, ended up shutting down two of them that were not on the path. Uh, but we have two new enterprise customers that we're incredibly grateful to start to serve. And we have a digital media engine that's really roaring with a lot of momentum to serve entrepreneurs. So when we do get back to that in-person layer, we hope it's going to be absolutely icing on the cake uh, yeah. and a great celebration and explosion. Um, but it was not easy and it is still not easy and we're still in the struggle. So I don't want to be able to say that we successfully pivoted at anything. We are in the fight every single day to build the business of our dreams. And um, I think it's just getting started. Wow. Wow. Well said. I like the one where you're raising money for businesses. You know, I might yeah. need to tap into that soon enough. Um, Done. Yeah, we, we have some um, some pretty crazy opportunities. If you want to go to nextgenhq.com slash investment uh, and check well, out okay. some of our select investing. investments. We have some of our investing. I'm sorry, nextgenhq.com slash investing. We have some of our select investments up on the site okay. as well as a way for both investors and entrepreneurs to access our resources. How many people do you guys have working right now on your team? <laughs> We're inching on it's, 20. We're inching yeah, we on 20. 17 full and uh, two incredible advisors. So right there. Yeah, okay. gearing up on 20. Awesome. Have you guys raised money when this all started or did you have to tap into lines and everything? Tons of us business, you know, and tons of entrepreneurs had to tap into all their lines, pull all their we ranked. We, we cranked up our leverage as to the maximum pit capability. Um, we did not raise a new equity round during this time period, uh, but we did crank up our leverage um, to uh, to do what we needed to do to line. Cash is king, our man Ray Dalio. Uh, I think he was proven wrong when he said cash is trash at the beginning of this and cash is king. So we loaded up on as much cash as we could at the very beginning. That was key. You know, everybody I talked to, especially in real estate, was raising a ton of money as fast as possible and tapping all their credit lines and everything to buy. But we haven't yet had that downturn. So in real estate, um, I'm finding a lot of entrepreneur, entre I'm finding a lot of opportunities in, uh, New Yorkers moving to North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, and they're just abandoning their properties and they're selling it cheap to me. So uh, wow. thi this month I'm closing on five properties. Wow. Just go, man. It's Dude, crazy. The, the, the volume that you're able to keep up with in your workflow is pretty nuts. Yeah, it's, it definitely helps. Technology definitely helps. You know, I think I am one of the only small single and multifamily investors with a small office, right? I technically have a small family office now um, that incorporates technology into every aspect of my business. Like I utilize Appfolio software for the management. I use, I link Appfolio with QuickBooks to streamline all the bookkeeping. Then I have my accountant review that. I mean, every, every aspect has some form of technology. I have a videographer that helps me set up everything because I don't even know how to set up a camera, you know? So, Every aspect there's looped in some sort of 
our generation, next gen, the next generation's uh, tech and future and just to outreach every way possible to streamline it. And I think that's why the volume has kept you know growing and has been as sustainable as it has been all this time. Um, I, I don't meet many other entrepreneurs in real estate uh, that buy single and multifamilies that have any technology looped into their businesses whatsoever to track almost anything because they just think I could buy a house and this is the money I have and that's the end of it. Alon, your superpower is not, let's say, going on Zoom and setting up record. It's not connecting QuickBooks, right? Your superpower is finding the opportunity and making it happen. So you have to get everything else off your plate, right? Justin would even tell you, don't do your laundry, get that service too, because that's not your superpower. Time is precious. Time is our number one asset. And if we're not doing the thing that we are most uniquely suited for, shame on us, shame on me, if I'm spending time that someone else could maybe do better, if not just as well, and I could be focused on what I need to focus on. I have to be my own coach in that sense to hold myself accountable. I'm lucky I got a partner here who keeps me accountable seven days a week, maybe take Shabbat off, right? But that is what we're chasing here. And so the idea of teams, amen, the idea of teams is so exciting because it allows us to all have our focus, the one thing perhaps that is core to us, and then we all share this responsibility of moving a mission forward. I love it, Justin. In school, you were told a lie, which is that you should be well-rounded. That is the biggest lie that the educational system tells you. You should not be well-rounded. You do not want to be well-rounded. You want to look at your weaknesses and look at your strengths. And then you want to triple, quadruple, 5x, double down on your strengths. You do not need to be a frankly, mediocre player in all of the areas. What you'd rather do is find what you are uniquely good at, uniquely excited about, uniquely fit with what the market is looking for, and you want to triple down on that area. So as Dylan said, that's where team building does come into play. Figure out what you are best at and try to do that 90 hours a week, and you will be successful. Well said. Say what's up to Steve, guys. Steve, you're the man. How how do we do, Steve? Is it fun? Good combo? Guys, you are you're amazing. Seriously, thank, thank you, man. Not only are you inspirational, but you're so well spoken that it's just it's just you, nice to listen to. Thank Very you, nice man. You. And Justin uses you know unique words, hiatus, all this stuff. He's, <laughs> you know, I'm showing off. I'm showing off for the real estate you know investors who are looking out there. I got nothing to say about that, but I do have a question for these guys. Shoot, if you let me ask a question here. So talking a lot about entrepreneurship and uh, younger or next generation. I think there's a lot of people who are very interested um, in entrepreneurship and building a business, uh, especially people maybe in high school, coming out of high school or in college and studying something that they maybe think they're interested in, but they really want to build something bigger than themselves. And maybe, I don't know, if you have any type of advice or recommendations for someone who is interested in being, you know, building a business, but doesn't necessarily have a solid idea or a foundation because you, you guys mentioned foundation a few times and the importance of that. So uh, just maybe if you guys can talk a little bit about uh, any type of guidance for a young inspire or aspiring entrepreneur with, uh, with some lack of direction. It's powerful. I'll jump in and, and start by saying um, for me, Steve, it's all about exposure and right behind that experience. So for that young person who I see myself at 17, 18, a lot in your description there, Steve, I thought I enjoyed business. I thought I wanted to experience entrepreneurship. I probably could not have told you what that really meant at the time. And if I had told you, it would have been a wrong definition. Um, If I had met other people, been privy to conversations like these, maybe had an internship or two at a startup, experiencing a founder or founders or a founding team, I think that would have been instrumental in my journey. Now, I don't regret that I didn't have those things because I got to learn them on my own merit, on my own dime. But for young people out there who are listening, who read this, and it all comes down to just getting out there. Who can you talk to? Who can you reach out to? Get on the phone, get on Zoom. Everybody's more accessible right now than they've ever been, period. Take advantage of that, especially students. 
And go to nextgenhq.com slash TrepStart, T-R-E-P-S-T-A-R-T. We acquired totally. a high school educational organization based in St. Louis earlier this year. And we are unrolling a new suite of offerings for high school students who are interested in learning more about what entrepreneurship could mean to them. So nextgenhq.com, you look around for the flag about for high school students, and we would love to show you some of our mentors and get you that exposure that Dylan was talking about. You know, that was, that was a really good question, Steve, because you brought up a memory in my head from a long time ago when I met this uh, high-level exec in Manhattan um, at, a, at a Shark Tank competition over there. And he said, you don't have to start the business to be the entrepreneur. You could get hired, right, or be part of something. Like Dylan mentioned, reach out to as many people as you can to be part of something. When he said that, it really clicked because you could reach out to 10 people and that one of those 10 people has something going on and you join their team and you could be the entrepreneur of the group. They could be the technician, you know? So that was entrepreneur our... is uh, it's in the mind. It is a it's an approach to life, and at next gen we view it's entrepreneurship is a tool. It's an approach to how you are living. It is not a classification. Oh, guys, it was a really happened. yeah, it was a pleasure to have you guys on the podcast, the Talk Shop podcast. I had a lot of fun. Always a pleasure as usual. I hope we can see each other in person soon enough. Justin Dylan, I'm going to invite you to my family's new home that we just got in Merrick. I'd love to see you guys again, and I'm so proud of everything you guys are doing. As usual, a great conversation, and until next time. Looking forward You're to the it, man brother. Talk Shop Thanks Tuesday, we out, baby. Much love, brother. Well, that wraps up this week's podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Before you go, I want to ask of you for something. I want you to share this podcast. If you learned anything or found any bits of feedback that could have been great, that could help somebody else, this is what NextGen is all about, sharing and spreading the message, making entrepreneurs succeed through helping them and empowering them with new content and features and abilities that they wouldn't have had otherwise. I appreciate you tuning in. I wish you guys the most success ever. I'm hyped up. I'm really inspired after this week's podcast and another one coming up next Tuesday. Thank you.